Hello everyone, I am Yam Madhuraj, the author of the short story Perspective. I am a high school student born and brought up in Chennai. My areas of interest are writing and reading novels. Other than that, I like to address rural gatherings and the rural development of India. So let's move on to the story. Perspective, a short story about two characters from similar environment but whose life were different due to, due to their perspective of life. Narcotics department officer Ravi Mohan was driving his car down a lonely road which was extremely silent under the midnight sky. He was driving with his mind still on the case files that his senior officer Jagdish had asked. Suddenly his car was jammed. He wasn't able to move further. Hence he got down to check what was wrong and open the bonnet. As he did that, weird sounds came from his trunk. He was alerted. He took out his stun gun and slowly crept towards the trunk of the car and stood in front of the trunk. He opened the doors, locked, and the trunk flew open, knocking him down. Before he could analyze the situation, a tall and well-built silhouette wearing a black hoodie stepped out of the trunk and kicked his stun gun. The anonymous man took out a small brick-like parcel of white powder and slammed it on Ravi's face. The blow was able to, able to knock down the car. The man pushed Ravi to the ground and suffocated him with the powder parcel until Ravi was dead. The man laughed sadistically as he saw the corpse of the officer. He got up and peacefully walked away like nothing ever happened. The following morning, police were informed that a corpse was lying in the neighborhood by the people living nearby. The case officer Jagdish, SPCBI, Director General of Narcotics Control Bureau, a very reputed young man, came to the crime scene wearing his black suit. He said to the police officer standing nearby, Jagdish from CBI and Director General of NCB, can I get a quick recap of what had happened here please? The officer greeted Jagdish and escorted him to the forensic agents who were working on the crime scene for possible evidences. One of the forensic agents approached Jagdish, removed his hospital mask and said, No doubt, Mr. Jagdish, this is the same man, the same man who murdered all the other members of your special anti-drug abuse squad. Jagdish was not surprised. He asked, How do you conclude so? The method of killing, sir, it's the same method, suffocation using cocaine. The killer overdosed Ravi on cocaine powder replied the forensic agent. Jagdish walked up and down the crime scene, utterly disturbed and hurt by the fact that the drug dealer has been on a rampage over his entire squad now, technically leaving Jagdish alone. And sir, this is a new find. We found it compressed in the cocaine block. I believe it, it's addressed to you, said the forensic agent who approached Jagdish with a letter. Jagdish received that letter and calmly read it. Once he read into the paper, he was shocked. It was a letter from the murderer. It read, Hey brother, what? You are feeling sad? Your entire squad is lost, is it? Well, it was all done by me, the most infamous serial killer and drug lord. Jagdish grit his teeth in anger as he read those lines. He continued reading, Enough of this useless hide and seek stuff. To make things clear, I want to meet you, Mr. Jagdish, at 11 pm, inside the Binnie Mills compound. Pelmo. See you soon. What? Is he crazy? thought Jagdish to himself. He swiftly rushed towards his car. On his way, he saw a homeless person sitting next to his small family smoking a cigarette. The CBI and narcotics chief stood fixed to the ground and saw that with melancholy and depression in his face. His early childhood incidences came back to his mind. The way he, how his father would get into the influence of drugs and would physically and verbally abuse him and his little brother, which made his brother run away from their family. But Jagdish came back to senses and walked towards his car. He drove towards the headquarters and walked up to his higher official's desk and reported, Sir, our sincere officer, Mr. Ravi Mohan, had sacrificed his life for our mission. Not just him, every member in my special squad did sacrifice their life for the nation's welfare, they deserve a justification. And also, I got this letter, sir. 
Please take a look at it and stretch the letter towards his senior. The senior officer slowly read it and said, Sure, don't worry. All the best. We'll get you a backup team. Jagdi stepped back, saluted and walked towards, walked out of the room. He saw the clock. He had 12 hours of time more to finally meet his rival. It was an hour before midnight. Jagdi drove his car, followed by two police jeeps. He pulled up the convoy just a few yards before the windy mills compound and got down. He went to the first and said, I will enter the building. Nobody follow me there. But everyone take your positions outside the building within the boundaries. You got that, Alpha team? Roger that, sir, said the armed guards in the first jeep. Beta team, you all take your positions in the rooftops of the six tall buildings in the mill surrounding area. Always keep your eye on him. If anything goes wrong, shoot him. But as far as possible, we want him alive. Got it? Beta team, Roger that, sir, replied the guards in the second jeep. All right, let's move out, instructed Jagdish and walked towards the building, all alone. He slowly entered the huge building. Once he set his foot in the building, he was able to hear loud laughter sound from a police radio. Jagdish got alerted, pulled out his pistol from his hostel and clocked it. Greetings, brother. I can't beg you not to shoot me. If you draw a gun at me, I too will draw a gun at your face. If you shoot me, I too will shoot you said the voice from the radio. Shut yourself up, you ugly monster, yelled Jagdish in anger and rage to kill the man. The voice once again laughed and replied, Do you know, I like you very much, because we share many things in common. You kill people, I too kill people. Your job requires you to deal with drugs, even my job requires me to deal with drugs. Jagdish grew angry and yelled, Shut up, shut up right now, stand in front of me like a man. There was no sound to be heard. The silence was very creepy and intense. A chill ran down his spine when he heard a voice from behind. The voice said, My most favorite thing that we have in common is and paused. Jagdi swiftly turned around and saw a silhouette of a tall man wearing black hoodie and pointed a gun pointing a gun towards him. The man continued, is our childhood. Jagdish was perplexed. perplexed. Childhood? Me and a criminal sharing the same childhood? He thought to himself, still pointing the gun at the man. Yes, my dear brother, didn't your younger brother leave the house at a very young age? Asked the man. Yes, replied Jagdish in a very low and confused tone. The man grinned and slowly removed the hood of his jacket. Jag Jagdish was totally taken aback. He was he was shook when he saw who it was. Arjun, he murmured in a low voice. Yes, the most infamous and sensational serial killer and drug dealer whom you have been trying to silence is your very own brother, replied the man. Jagdish was losing his balance. He asked, why? Why should you behind, be behind all this? Arjun replied angrily, frustration, frustration since childhood. Don't you remember how addicted our dad was towards drugs? Those were times when his addiction would be more important to him than feeding us. It's same everywhere. There are stories where education was sacrificed due to poverty. But no story exists where addiction was given up due to poverty. I was just fascinated by the fact that you could mint money using addiction of people. Hence, I became the drug lord. Jagdis was still not relieved from his shock. He finally asked, you say you thought about the fact of minting money through drug business. Did you know how unethical and immoral it is? You, j you just thought about the first side of it. Did you think about the traumas uh, we went through? Don't you realize that doing this will ruin thousands of families? Do you want many other families to feel the trauma we went through? Arj the stone-hearted man broke down and sobbed. He lowered his gun and sobbed even more. Jagdi saw this and said with tears in his eyes, Leave all these, Arjun. Livelihood out of sin is very cruel towards the end. Don't worry now. You still have time to change. Arjun ran up to his brother to hug him and cried. Jagdish opened his arms to hug Arjun back. But all of a sudden, 
a loud noise of glass shattering was heard along with a gunshot. Arjun was shot in his chest. Jagdi's eyes widened in horror. He heard his Bluetooth earphone say, Target neutralized. Beta team out over and out, sir. Jagdi ran and knelt beside, beside his dying brother. No, no, stay with me, Arjun. You will be all right. Come, instructed Jagdish, crying. Arjun laughed with the pain and said, See, as you said, my sins are now reflecting on me. Now it's my time to leave. Jagdish tried carrying him out, but Arjun held his hand and said, No, don't. It's the waste of time. There's a memory card in my jacket. It contains all the details of the drug dealers and deals in our state. Go, don't spare any one of them. He winked at Jagdish with a smile and his breathing stopped once and for all. Jagdish carried his little brother's corpse in his arms and walked out of the building, crying. He had to do all the funeral process for his brother's body. The following day, it was the award function to honor Jagdish's act of bravery. He was not fully happy about it. His team, his brother, his happiness, everything was sacrificed for his career. Yet, he felt proud. When he was asked, asked to speak, he addressed all the gather, gathering and the squad people who sacrificed their lives. And he finally said, I realized something just yesterday. A very important thing which I wanted to share with you. Two boys, same father, same story, yet we both ended up having different lives. If, if we both were asked why we ended up in our respective careers, we both would have replied the same. I saw my father. The only thing that differentiated us is also the same thing, perspective. I realized that your perspective in your life determines your destination. Your perspective of life can either make you a survivor or a victim. Have a good day. Thank you.